أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على مبعث رحمة العالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبع بالإسلام المدين رسمته وبرادز نسيس الزندين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أما we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome today for another episode of our weekly sessions here at the North Brixen, Brixen Islamic Cultural Center in London. Tonight, bi'idhn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to talk about as usual the silsila, the series of our humble beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah, bi'idhn Allah ta'ala, is going to talk to us tonight. And that is the Islamic Manawism. Um, before we go to the Manawism and character in the Deen, we will recite as usual few ayat from the Quran, which I'm going to do now, inshallah, and narrate the nutshell meaning of this ayat. Thereafter, I will pass the mic to my humble, humble Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. With me, of course, Sheikh Abdullah is at the far end. As I can see, my Sheikh, Sheikh um, Faisal Buadi as well, our Chief Imam, is with us. So you've seen it, yeah? Chapter 35, verse 15. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إن الله والله هو الغني الحميد إن يشاء يذهبكم ويأتي بخلق جديد وما ذلك على الله بعزيز ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدع مثقلة إلى حملها لا لا يحمل منه شيء وإن تدع مثقلة إلى حملها لا يحمل منه شيء ولو كان ذا قربا إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب وأقاموا الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسه وإلى الله لمصير وما يستوي العمى والبصير ولا الظلمات ولا النور ولا الذل ولا الحرور وما يستوي الأحياء ولا الأموات إن الله يسمع من يشاء وما أنت بمسمع من في القبور إن أنت إلا نذير إنا أرسلناك بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وإن من أمة إلا خلا فيها نذير وإن يكذبوك فقن كذب الذين من قبلهم جاءتهم رسلهم جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات وبالزمر جاءتهم رسلهم بالبينات وبالزبر وبالكتاب المنير ثم أخذت الذين كفروا فكيف كان نكير الأصيص يا أيها الناس سر أو يمن كايد أنتم الفقراء إلى الله you are all poor in the sight of Allah. You are all poor people. You have needs. Wallahu hu al-ghani al-hamid. Allah is the one who is free of all wants or needs and worthy of all praise. In yasha, if Allah wills, if He pleased, Yudhibukum. He could just take all of us, wipe us from the surface of this earth. Wayati bi khalqin jadid. And he will bring a new creation of his own that will obey him and abide by his commands and rules. Wama thalika ala Allahi bi aziz. That is not a difficult task to your Lord. Never. And Allah continues saying, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وِزْرَ أُخْرَى No one, no soul can bear 
a burden of another soul. Mr. B will not carry the load or the burden of Mr. A, the day of judgment. It will not happen. Everyone will be on his own. And Allah continues saying, He said, وَإِن تَدْعُوا مُثْقَلَةٌ إِلَى حِمْلِهَا لَا يُحْمَلْ مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ He said, if you call another one to bear a load, no one can take a list or least portion of it. No one. They cannot carry anything of the even if the person has a relation or related to you, it will not happen. It said, your duty is to warn those who fear Allah. In the secrets, they believe in Allah and they fear Him in the secrets. And they establish regular prayers. وَمَنْ تَزَكَّى Whoever purifies him or herself فَإِنَّمَا يَتَزَكَّى لِنَفْسِي He does that for his own soul. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ You shall all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sooner or later. Our destination is to Allah. This world is not your place of abode or rest. Your final place of abode would be to your Lord. وَمَا يَسْتَوُ الْعَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ The blind and the seeing, the one who sees, are not equal. Are they, are they alike? They are not equal. وَلَا الظُّلُمَاتِ وَلَا النُّورِ Not the light, yeah, is equal to the, light, to the darkness. They are not the same. The darkness and the light are not the same. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he said, وَلَا ذِلْ وَلَا حَرُورُ And no, the chili or the shade is equal with the heat of the sun when the sun sets. Right? The sun, mashallah, penetrate on the earth. It shines everything. Allah said it is not equal. وَمَا يَسْتَوِ الْأَحْيَا وَلَا الْأَمْوَاتِ Not the light, the living, is alike to the dead. They are not equal at all. In Allah Yusmi'a Man Yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wills, He will make a person or a servant adhere to His commands and rules. So no one will adhere to the rules of Allah without His own wishes. You cannot yeah, make those buried in the grave here. No. In anta illa nadir, your duty is just a one. You are a wanna. Inna arsal nak. Allah said, I have sent you, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, bil haq, with the truth, with the truth. Bashira to one and give glad tidings to those who believe in Allah and the day of judgment. That if they abide by the commands of Allah, they will be admitted in Al Jannah. May Allah make us be amongst them. Amen. Wanadira and to one those who transgress, they go beyond limits. That the punishment of Allah is severe. Wa imin ummatin illa khala fiha nadir. Allah said He did not send any nation, but He would make sure. There is a messenger chosen amongst them to warn them and to give them glad tidings. Wa'in you can but if they reject you and your message, فَقَدْ كَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ There are people, nations before them who rejected the truth. جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Their messengers came to them with a clear proof and signs and messages from their Lord. They came to them with the messages and also as well as scriptures and books. Allah said, Al Munir, books that are very, very clear and 
illuminating yeah. Allah said then I arrested those who rejected the faith Allah punished them فَكَيْفَ كَانَ نَكِيرٌ Look how terrible their path was, their punishment was. May Allah save us from the chastisement of this world and the hereafter. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in the deen, without much ado, as I have just narrated the nutshell meaning of these verses to you, I would pass the mic now to my dearest beloved, humble Sheikh brother, Sheikh Abdullah Faliyatafaddal Mashkura. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. From what the Sheikh recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله. Oh people, you have the poor, you're poor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the human being is very poor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ways uh, in all ways yes, as the Shaykh said because Allah created us and we're dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, were not to take us with his inayah, with his protection and his mercy with that's it, we're finished. So we're aiming and hoping to get uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what He's promised us, which is the Jannah. And the Jannah, we have to work for it. And the type of poverty that I want to talk about, taken from the Surah, is the poverty of knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from... Wa alaykum salam wa ta'ala wa Created us uh, ignorant. And later on, inshallah, we might come to the... <coughs> the ayah that talks about the, um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered the amana, which is the amana, the trust, and this trust is the trust of the deen, means the, the do's and the don'ts, the halal and the haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna aradna al amana ta'ala al samawati wal ardi wal jibali, that we have offered this amana to the, the heavens and the earth and the mountains. They refused to take it. وَأَشْفَقْنَ مِنْهَا And they were fearful. And, and fearing mercy to take it. وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانِ And the human being carried this amana. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا Verily, he was an oppressor, a wrongdoer, and jahula. Jahula is an ignorant person. So the human being by nature is ignorant. And ignorance, that's jahul. And that's because you're jahl, you're ignorant, you're going to need something to rectify your ignorance with your knowledge. And this is the type of poverty that I want to take from the ayah that the Prophet recited. Inshallah. And on the Prophet وسلم, linking the ayah with what I have in front of me, the Prophet وسلم, said, May you read Allah who be khayran, you faqihu fi deen. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for him, he teach him deen, fiqh, and the fiqh is the opposite of not just information, it's not, it's not, it's not ilm, ilm is knowledge, and ilm breaks into certain things, one of them is information, many people have information, doesn't mean that they're knowledgeable, you can have information, but you don't become knowledgeable with that information you have until you put it into practice, so once that information becomes practice, practiced by you, that becomes knowledge that you can utilize and you can adhere to and you can call people to. So, fiqh goes even deeper than knowledge. Fiqh is the, no the knowledge of the detail of things. And fiqh is knowing what to put, when to put, where to put. And that's why it's the ability, the fiqh, is the ability to implement religious rules or the ahkam in practice according to its time and according to its circumstance. Because many people knowing a hadith or an ayah from the Quran 
you might misuse it or put it in the wrong place or understand it the wrong way. And many Muslims, we all depart, we are different parties and different groups and this and, that, and this and that, but we all derive, we all depart from the same thing. But because of the understanding, so that's why the understanding of the deen has to be in the light of the understanding of the Salaf, the Prophet وسلم, and the three generations after him, that's the understanding of the deen. And Imam Malik rahimahullah said, مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ دِينًا فَلَا يَكُنَ الْيَوْمَ دِينًا On that day, or the, what's not known as deen, at the time of the predecessors, the, the Salaf Salih, cannot be deen today. So when some people come in the later ages, in the later stages of this deen, at 1500 years, they're going to come and teach us something new to us that we did not know. So the deen is going back to the Salaf Salih. So the hadith here, if Allah wants good for you, He teaches you deen. So you know your deen. If you don't know your deen, you lose the trap to reach in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing your deen is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is a sign that Allah wants good for you. And in jurisprudence, the ulama says, مفهوم المخالفة, knowing something by its contrast, if Allah said, if the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah wants good for you, He gives you fiqh in the deen, what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite? I said, if Allah wants good for you, He gives you fiqh understanding in the deen. What's the opposite of that? It means that if, you, if, if Allah doesn't want good for you, you stay ignorant in the deen. So, knowing the deen is a sign that Allah wants good for you. So, مفهوم المخالفة or the understanding or the, 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 the practice of this, 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 um, uh, this qaida, this rule, that if Allah doesn't want good for you, you stay ignorant. And here staying ignorant, generally some people, is by their choice. It's the same way that we came to this country, we learned English. And I'm talking about myself. And I'm talking about people who came from backgrounds where English is not the mother of the tongue, or people don't speak English. But alhamdulillah, all of us, we speak English. But not all of us, we speak Arabic. And not all of us understand the deen. So, <coughs> being ignorant of the deen is a choice. Nobody has an excuse to say, oh Allah, I don't know. The same way you learned English, you need to learn your Salat, you need to learn Fatiha, you need to learn the, the, to learn the meaning of the Fatiha, you need to learn many things that is known in the Deen, al ma'lum min al Deen, but darura, what needs to be known by obligation. It's not a choice. Even if you are ignorant, if you, even if you're illiterate, even if you've never been to school, even if you can't read and write, alhamdulillah you can hear. The Quran is translated in all languages. I don't want to exaggerate. The, the hadith is it, it translated. You can get anything in any language, any time, at the stretch of your hand to a CD or computer or whatever. You can go anywhere and get, alhamdulillah, knowledge. We pay money for tuitions for our children, for English, maths, and science. But do we pay tuition for them to be educated in the deen? to know akhlaq, to have good character. In the old days, people, they used to pay a muallim, a teacher, a murabbi, an educator for their children. Here is called elocution. Elocution is, is um, how to sit. Rich people, people who are affluent, they take their children to special schools to teach them how to sit, how to eat, how to talk, how to walk. It's not for no reason that these people they are leaving because they learned the manners of the Prophet وسلم, but not from the basis of the deen. They learned the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in terms of food, in terms of dress, in terms of talk. If you look out there, go to affluent areas and speak to affluent people, say whether their children scream and shout and swear, you'll never hear that. Well, why are our children, why are we, why are our wives and our husbands, 
screaming, shouting, swearing, cursing, because we don't know everything. So we need to learn. So the fiqh that Allah subhanahu the Prophet وسلم, spoke about here is a sign of goodness and ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, I'll talk, carry on a little bit with the social mannerism. I'm going to try to attach it to the period or the timing or the uh, we're in, which is Ramadan, inshallah, coming upon us soon, inshallah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to reach it, inshallah. Because the Salaf used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach and you to, to balig, uh, to, uh, and you Ramadan to get them to reach Ramadan for the benefits and blessings of Ramadan and the virtues. So, why we're so keen and why we're concerned about the social mannerism in Islam? What's the essence of the hayat? What's the essence of life? In question, what is the essence of life? Why are we working? Why are we getting married? Why do we have children? Why do we, why do, we do all this? What do we want? A good life. Yeah. Naam, it's a good life. What is a good life? It is a good life. Is it a big car, a big house, Peace lots of, of money? Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. What is peace of mind? When you have your good relationship with your creator. Uh, that's a good good relationship with your creator. That's part of the peace of mind. But if you you, you have fights with your husband or your wife, you won't have peace of mind. <laughs> yes, uh, correct. So what is peace of mind? It's happiness. What is happiness? How do you become happy? Be humble. When you're content. Yeah, now. Nah. Yeah, to be satisfied with whatever you have. To be satisfied with whatever you have. Yes. So this satisfaction, which is qana'a, is part of how you reach happiness in the dunya. Because the satisfaction, it depends what it is. It has to be a satisfaction that is psychological. It has to be a satisfaction that is spiritual because we live in the West and we know that many people are committing suicide. Many people are all antidepressants. Many people, they are doing all crazy things to feel or to reach the essence of life. And the essence of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us in an easy prescription. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ But one, one ayah. Allah says whoever does a good deed, a good deed, from a male or a female, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ This is the condition. This is a conditional sentence. Whoever does a good deed from male or female, and we mentioned before previously that male and female includes Muslim and non-Muslim. And there are a lot of non-Muslims that are doing very good deeds. But the condition in this ayah, وَهُوَ mu'min, You have to be a believer in Allah for your deed to be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Verily, we grant them, we give them a life that is good and pure and nice. A goodly life. وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ And we reward them, they reward بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ With the best of what they used to do. So the best deed you did in the dunya, Allah will reward you for that. At that level. Because your deeds are not all at the same level. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the, the human being who believes in him a goodly life in the dunya and in the hereafter. Even though, that's why the man, Ibn uh, Hajar al-Asqalani, Hafidullah rahimahullah, he, he, he used to be a judge, a qadi. And he, when he goes out, he goes out in this massive, like, you know what I mean, escort. So a man from the people of the book saw him and he interrupted the, the, the escort, the, the crowd, and he said, I've got a question. He said, what is it? He said, didn't you, Prophet, said, a dunya sijnul mu'min, a dunya jannatul kafir, 
وسجن المؤمن The dunya is the paradise of the non-believer and it's the prison of the believer Why is that? Why is the dunya is the paradise of the believer and why is it the prison of the, of the paradise of the non-believer and the, and, and, and the prison of the, of the believer? Why? Why is it? Why is, the, why, is the, why, is, why is this dunya is, is a prison for us or for the, the, the believer? Because you are constrained, because you have do's and don'ts, halal and haram. You can do that, you can't do that. Somebody who doesn't have this morality, who doesn't have these morals, who doesn't have these boundaries, everything to them is free. So he said to him, didn't your prophet say this? He said, yes, he did. He said, look at you. And look at me. And that person used to sell oil. He was a zayat. And he had traces. He was not dressed properly. He was poor. And when they left the deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taken away from them the dunya. So this is a lesson for us to understand that if we want the dunya, to live in the dunya at the standard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in, which is a goodly life, we have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do righteous deeds. But this doesn't happen as simple as I put it, because it's, it's not going to happen overnight. So that's why social mannerism here, it grants you that. And we're going to come later to understand how the, your mannerism, how your character, it might, be, it might reach you even higher than the fasting and the prayer you pray. And it tells you Islam is a religion that emphasizes good character. Islam is not a religion that you can just go to the masjid, come out of the masjid, pray and don't have anything to do with this life. No, this life is the essence of you implementing your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be them or be it Muslim or non-Muslim, male or female, big or small. And this is what creates humanity. When you say humanity, or being humane, is your heart going out to other people from your kind, from your religion, from your family, from your race, from your ethnicity, from your, 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 your geographical restrictions? That's what is humanity. And this is why Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this deen for mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna dina inda Allah in Islam is only one religion. One religion. Islam. To surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the whole essence of what we're trying to do. The mihak. The challenge is us to subdue ourselves to do what Allah wants us to do. It's very hard. It's not, it, doesn't happen, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not for no reason that the Prophet ﷺ said, teach your children Salat at 7 and discipline them at 10. Why? Because Salat is not something you're going to do overnight. It's something you're going to be doing for 50 years, 60 years, sometimes 100 years. And for you to be doing something for 100 years, you need some preparation. And that's why if you don't teach your children at a very young age, and when they become teenagers and you tell the girl, put the hijab, or you tell the boy, why don't you pray, don't blame them. If you have not taught them that. If you don't, if you have not taught your children, or you put them on a, on a, on a track, to be on it, until it becomes a routine. It's a routine. And that's why this, um, this uh, psychologist is speaking, he's, he's talking about how to change your character. He said, and he's talking about the age of seven. If I had time, oh Allah, I will play it for you. It's a very interesting clip. And he's talking about the age of seven, a child up to the age of seven. And he said, give me any child up to the age of seven, and I'll make of him a man. And he's a non-Muslim. So what these people are doing, they get into the conclusions by experimentation, by research, by hard work. After 30, 40 years, they gave you a statement that the Prophet ﷺ gave us from revelation. So this is the understanding that we have to have as Muslims and how, how we need to, to view our deen, that our deen is 
a progressive deen. What does it mean progressive? It doesn't mean we want it to change, but it's going to be different, or we have to uh, re tailor it, or retune it. No, a progressive means it's a deen that goes with all times. Islam is for every time and every place. So nobody should come and tailor Islam for us to make it wherever it's not. So the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. Because if somebody is going to come and tailor Islam for us according to their own hawa, their own wing, their own self, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is meaningless. Stuff for Allah. Because Allah says, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم Today I have completed for you your deen. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I've completed my favorites upon you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I have have a, a chosen for you Islam as a deen. But Radit here is not only chosen because Radit means I'm pleased for you to take Islam as a deen. It's pleasure. رَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ Not only chosen but pleased to choose for you. So this is what we need to understand about our deen. But if we don't have this understanding, then we cannot propagate it the right way. This is on the one hand. Now you know the essence of your deen. You need to propagate it. You need the right character. Who do you need to imitate? The Prophet So can you say that the essence of life is to the Sheikh is saying, for you to, to have uh, a, a goodly life or the essence of life is to fulfill the kalima which is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so this is a very concise comprehensive sentence or phrase or statement that the muslim makes but we are unaware of the essence of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah if we are unaware of the essence of the essence of life then we will never have a goodly life until we understand what is the essence. So these things, that it has to be taken seriously because the problem I see here, and when I look, I see people who have gone past a certain age. And that certain age is an age, alhamdulillah, that we are at a level of a sense of maturity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, حتى إذا بلغ أشده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال ربي أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي. Talking about the child, the good child, when they reach forty and they will reach the the peak of their strength. الأشد is the strength. He said, ربي أوزعني. Oh Allah, bless me to to be grat to show gratitude to you. And to my parents. When? At the age of 40. So because that's, 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 the, that's the peak of maturity. Your body is balanced. Your thinking is balanced. Your brain is balanced. Knowing who you are is balanced. So I don't have too much fear about you, Lord. Even though, it doesn't mean, there's no guarantee. We all can err, we can do wrong, we can do the haram. We can, but where are our children? Where are those whose personality is not stable yet? Where are our teenage children who are, can be here and there, who are not stable, who don't know who they are yet, who are not stable in the deen subject-wise, they're not stable on the deen practice-wise. We need to get these people here. If alhamdulillah, what has been saying here by the shuyukh constantly, every Saturday, you take it and you spread it to your family, alhamdulillah, that's good. But if you take it and keep it to yourself, who's going to replace you when you go? So don't expect things to happen just like that. You have to get your children involved in this. And if you are generous, the Prophet wasallam said, one of you don't, doesn't believe until he loves for himself, what he loves for his brother. What about for your daughter? What about for your son? What about for your husband or your wife? 
if the husband is here, the wife is not here, he should go home and teach her. If she's here and he's at home, she should go home and teach him. But if we don't do that, this knowledge is going to be here. Every Saturday, knowledge is being distributed here, and only us eating. We're not inviting anybody to that knowledge. So if there is higher, you should call people to it. If you learn something, go home and say, look, by the way, I learned this and that. Do you know it? No. What is it? Tell me. But if you hear and you learn, gather, gather your children and tell them. If you cannot bring them here, at least teach them at home. But if you don't do that, don't expect them to know. Because if you learn and they don't learn, and you go home and you don't tell them, what do you expect, where do you expect them to get that knowledge from? They're not going to get a revelation. So this is your responsibility and my responsibility and our responsibility. We need to leave behind us a nice trail. A nice trail. And that nice trail is not easy. Anybody can have children, but not anybody can bring them up. It's a trust. And we have to know how to answer for that. And if the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is the core of the human, the human being's life, the Muslim in, in particular, and it's the pillar, then the love of Allah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the essence of it is mercy. And here I'm going to open a little bracket to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, <coughs> وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed between you Mawadda is talking about the husband and the wife Mawadda and Rahmah Mawadda is love But it's love that transcends the physical Because love is not only the physical When the woman gets 70 and the, to 80 and 90 The beauty dissipates The wealth goes the look goes, the body goes, same for the man. But what stays? The love that transcends the physical. That's why if you look outside and see a couple walking and they're both after, beyond 70, you start looking at them with a smile thinking how beautiful that scene is. Why? Because the love when the material, but the, the rahmah, the mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Rahmah is mercy. And any marriage that doesn't have mercy on it, it won't, it will never last. Because if you have love only, your husband one day is not going to be good looking. The wife is not going to be in her, mashallah, nice fit look. So what are you going to do then? Are you going to exchange her? You need to have mercy. You need, you, need, you need to have mercy. It's mercy that carries on the marriage after the age of, of, of enjoyment. There's a different type of enjoyment now. It's the company. It's you walking home and holding the hand of that man that you've had children with or you're still with without a child or whatever. But alhamdulillah, you see in them the past that your life that you live. But you have to have mercy. If you don't have mercy, And for this reason, the, the, the structure of the Islamic uh, society has to be based on this. For it to reach the goodly life and the essence of this life. Because everybody is doing things to be happy. But there is a happiness in the dunya and there is a happiness in the hereafter. And the Muslim is a person that should go beyond just the happiness in the dunya. Because the happiness in the dunya one day will go. And the dunya is always mu'akkara, is always tarnished with problems, with stress, children, marital problems, illnesses. So the dunya is all, never going to be completely uh, untarnished. Because that's Jannah. In Jannah, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍّ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُّ مُتَقَابِلٍ 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken from the hearts of the people who will be entering Jannah. Ghil means envy, enmity, hatred, all the things that disturb this life. And this is from the good character of the Muslim, is that you have to teach yourself now to take from your heart things that should not be there. It's not easy. Whenever I say something, don't ex I'm not expecting you, I'm expecting myself to go and change overnight. But it's a long process we have to work on. So the Muslim, because of the essence of the life we want, and because of the benefit we want in this dunya and in, in the hereafter, we need to take this deen from its... The, to, to take the essence of this deen is to understand it. That's why I started talking about the fiqh in the deen. The fiqh is in the deen, it helps you how to lead a good life. And then that poverty you have of knowledge you have to satisfy that poverty and you have to seek Allah's help by at least trying, doing your best Wallahi al-Azim, if you do your best that's what, imagine you have a child, they, they try but they can't understand, they try but they get it wrong you won't get angry with them because they try but we have to try at least to learn our deen at, at least try. Many people they said, oh, I'm not, I, I can't do that. I can't pronounce the Ghain in Arabic. I can't say what a Ba'alim. Try. I mean, many of us they speak very good English, mashallah. English is not my mother tongue. Why did I learn it? Because I wanted to learn it, because it brings benefit. It's the same for the Deen. You need to know at least, at least, to be ahead of your children. In terms of knowledge, many parents, they don't even know what their children are learning. And your child can be sitting next to you opening a book for 10, well, you won't even know what he's doing. You need to be ahead of your child. The same way you are on WhatsApp, and you're on Twitter, and you know social media, and you know what your children are up to, at least get to know what your children are up to in terms of the deen. Call him and say, come here. Do you know how to pray? What are the pillars of the Salat? How do you perform wudu? What are the names? And I do this to children. Bring, take children and ask them. Name the, the, the ten Sahaba. Wallahi al-Azim is very hard for them. Ask him to name it for the team. Allah did it to some children. He named me the, the team, the reserve, Wallah, the, the manager, if they even know personal details about the players and they cannot name 10 Sahaba 10 and I don't want to do this to you lot <laughs> I don't want you to fail the test <laughs> no, <it's> next week Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You were the best nation that was sent out for people because you enjoy good and you forbid evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see here in this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you enjoy good and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah. So Allah put, subhanAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala put believe last. You enjoy good, this is a social mannerism. You forbid evil, this is social mannerism. Then they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because a sign of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you enjoying good and forbidding evil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, carry on from the, the, the rest of the وَلَوْ آمَنَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ and if the people of the book believed, it would have been better for them. And I'm saying from this ayah, because the people of the book, when they believe, they do better work than the people who have been in Islam. And look at there, so look at the reverse, and I mentioned before to you, how people can come to this deen and be so, produ so productive, 
and they learn better and they learn more and it was wallahi al-adim look at some reverts how they take this deen very seriously when they be he becomes a muslim in three six months one year two years he, he will it will destroy you as a muslim who's been a muslim for 30 40 years he knows the arkan al-iman he know he is read subhanallah some qawaid about the deen some fiqh fiqh as salat they know many things the seerah and us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَلِي الْمُرْكَمْ I let it be amongst you an ummah, a group that calls to goodness and this is a social mannerism this Islam is a religion it's not only for you as I said earlier on it should be for you and the next person the person sitting next to you is your brother is your brother in the deen as in your brother in, 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 in this khayr you're in, we should not be stingy with what we have. People are calling to haram, people are calling to crazy stuff and they're making it look nice and people are joining in. Can't we as Muslims make people join our club? Is Islam so bad? It's so, so unwanted that Muslims cannot bring any new adherent to it? So it, what does it mean? Either the Islam is not something that is interesting or we are the bad representatives of Islam. And that's why the saying goes that as, uh, if, it's, if it's sahih, if it's authentic, that Yusuf Islam says that Islam is a, relig is a good religion, it's, it's a good case with, with bad defenders. It's a very good case, but we don't have good defenders. And you cannot be a good defendant or defender until you know what you're defending. You have to know what you're defending. You have to know what's Islam. Because if you go to work and somebody asks you, oh, you know, Islam is a terrorist religion. How are you going to answer that? Yeah. Why did you say that? Yeah, why did you say that? No, that, that's, that's, that's uh, what is it called? <laughs> Being homophobic. Yeah. No. If somebody says Islam is a terrorist religion, say no, that's, that's not true. Because this and this and this and that. But if, if you don't know, how are you going to answer that? Wallah, we, 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 it's very sad that many Muslims, they cannot defend a simple case. If I, if I throw on you now a shubha, a shubha is an ambiguity about the deen. I know you won't be able to defend it. And you're a Muslim, and I'm a Muslim, I can trick you. Imagine somebody who's throwing an ambiguity for you to confuse you in your own deen. I was watching it last week, this week, a man who became a Muslim for 16 years. And now he came out saying, I left Islam. But that's not, it's not, um, it's, it's, it's very confusing. Not Allah, I don't want to say he was, this is not genuine. But when you know, you listen to him, you know that he is not genuine. Why? Because for 16 years you would have known things that now you're claiming against Islam. But if he comes to you with the shubha, with the ambiguity that he throws at you now you know, on YouTube, you might start thinking, yeah. You might, he might start casting doubts in yourself about your own deen. So you need to know. And I'm not worried too much about you, Wallahi al -adim. I'm worried about your children. And I'm worried about my own children, because they are living in, 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 in very strange time. They're living in the midst of fitna. They're living in the midst of things that are not comprehensible to us. And they're poor children. So how are you going to protect them if they don't know their deen? That um, the, 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 as the Shaykh says, the essence of life is 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 La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we said before, La ilaha illallah is fifty percent. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the next fifth, the second fifty percent. So you need to know who's Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You have to. You don't have a choice. Because everybody, two things this man is, 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 
is uh, is claiming his false claims, mis uh, the conceptions, misconceptions, or contentions he has about the. It goes to two things: the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. a proof that he is a person who is false. And he goes to certain things that are very sensitive for the Muslims to understand themselves. You have to go, you have you have to know your deen. You have you have to know your deen. And your children have to know their deen as well because this is gonna they're gonna be going to school, and they're gonna be doing RAC. You know what's RAC? Sec uh, relationships and sex education. They're gonna be. T it's a new thing from September 2020. You should know that your children. They need to know. You need to sit with them. Say, son, daughter, come here. This, 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 this. There's nothing wrong with teaching your children this at home. You can teach them. It's, it's not haram in the deen to sit with your daughter. And I ask, I'm teaching children. And we're doing recently, we divided the classes to girls and boys for the sake of some sensitivities in terms of Islamic studies, talking about puberty. I've asked the class, has anyone of you, Wallahi al and this is a test, I asked the children, has anyone of you ever been approached by their father, I'm talking to the boys, and they taught you about puberty? None of them, except one. If the mother doesn't approach the daughter and say to her, look, daughter, you're reaching an age with this, 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 that. Boys, you're reaching an age with this, 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 this. How is this child going to know? And we're shouting because the schools, do you want to teach them that? Yes, if you don't teach them at home, let them teach them anything they want. You have to teach them that. Sister Sumaya is there, she's at the back. She's just teaching the girls. They have no idea. They have no idea. They have no idea about the ghusl. They, they have no idea. Ask, have, children don't know how to perform their ghusl. They've reached puberty, they don't know. And we shout and screaming because the government wants to teach them something else. Or if you don't teach them that, don't blame the government. Teach your children. Teach them the change in their bodies. Teach them certain things that they should know by obligation. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I just see because it, this is frustrating. It, this is frustrating. What's the solution? What is the solution? Who, wh wh what's, how are we going to fix up? What is the solution? The suggestion? What do we have to do? First, you know that the, the, the home is the first home of education. Yeah, the home is the first place of education, so yes. It will start to impact certain values mm -hmm. of time. Okay. Next, uh, any, any other suggestions? What's the solution? You told us. We've got to learn to be able to teach. we we got to learn, yeah, because you can't teach your children if you don't know now. Yeah, like you say, we have to teach the children. Um, one of the other things that we go at me here, like, we, we all have our children. Lord, them to master you. We, yeah. We sit here and lecture and they're running around. They're That's why I said earlier on. Wrong. We come here to learn, our children are not learning. If you learn and you go and you, mashallah, reflect that to your children, alhamdulillah, that's good. But if you don't do that, you're being selfish. You're caring. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman, O you who believe, protect yourselves. He didn't say, that's it. He didn't stop there. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum, your spouses. And your children, your husbands, if the woman, mashallah, is educated and she knows the deen, she should teach her child, her, her husband, and she teach her children. Well, you, only you want to go to Jannah? Right, sir. Only you? What about if you, know what I mean? you go to Jannah or you see your wife going to hell? So say, bye, thank you very much. No! If you want her to go to Jannah, at least help her in the dunya. Or the husband, the wife can help the husband. If the husband is not at the, a scratch to scratch in terms of the religious knowledge, and the wife, mashallah, she is endowed, she should help bring the husband. But we don't get married to go to Jannah together. This is the essence. We don't get married to go to Jannah together, and we don't have children to take them to Jannah with us. I'm worried about myself. 
Jannah is not only for you. Why don't you want it for your wife and your husband and your children? That's it, that's the answer. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasooli ila da'akum lima yuhiikum. Oh, if you believe. Answer to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would have killed us for it. Because you can find somebody who is a ruler, who is a king, who is a celebrity, who is an actor, she is an actress, the millionaires. They have mansions with 10 and 50 rooms, but they're taking antidepressants. And they're killing themselves. They're killing themselves. Why somebody in the West, in Sweden, or Finland, or Switzerland, Switzerland, there are some places in Switzerland you can eat on the ground. Literally. They're so clean, you can eat on the ground. In Sweden. Yet people kill themselves. Why? The spirit is not satisfied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to. And the Prophet sallallahu is calling us to. It's what is going to give us life. A goodly life. In the dunya and the hereafter. I don't know how much that she had this time. Next five minutes. Next five minutes. Next so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to and the Prophet sallallahu called us to good character, good mannerism. Why? For the sake of the unity of the society, of humanity. And when we don't take this into consideration, we fall apart easily. We're broken. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us an essence of the deen to be in together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold on to the cord or the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. And together includes everybody. Includes your race. Includes your tribe. Includes your color. Includes your status. Inshallah, when I come back, I try to relate this to Ramadan. Because this is the essence. And the shayukh, they covered some, some, some stuff about Ramadan last time, last Saturday. But I'm going to see if I can, inshallah, bring Ramadan. Because Ramadan is a, a time. And it's an occasion that brings us together. And it gives us the essence of the, 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 the togetherness that Allah subhanahu wa, uh, wa ta'ala wants us for us to bypass the illness, the ailments of ourselves, the racism in us. We are racist. Human beings are racist. The ignorant, the arrogant, the oppressing themselves. So you have to learn that this Ramadan coming is not for food. It's not for the best programs on TV. I don't know here what's in England, but I know in the Arab Muslim world, the best programs are in Ramadan. And the best food and cooking programs are in Ramadan. They tell you how to make nice harira. Well, why is that? That's not the essence of Ramadan. And Ramadan is the display of mannerism. Why? Because you're going to be in a crowd of people. See, if you are with your wife and your children, you're fine. You can bypass certain things. But when you're sitting with 10, 20, 50 people you don't know, you have to comport yourself. You have to compose yourself. You need to know how to deal with these people, regardless of their background. So we need to learn and prepare yourself, inshallah, and hopefully, bismillah, uh, when we come back, uh, we go over this. I'll finish with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا Do not fight one another. You'll be weak. وَتَذْهَبَ رِيْحُكُمْ Your strength will go. And be patient. Very little Allah is with the patient ones. And Ramadan is a test for all this. Ramadan is a test for good mannerism. If we pass Ramadan, with a flying color in terms of your behavior and mannerism, inshallah, there will be a means for you 
to fast, the fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, wants us to fast. I'll stop here till we come back inshallah. Subhanak Allah, wa bihamdik, shalala, ilayla, 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 ilayla,